Hello SGD Sacred Ge Geometry Decoded. You'll find both these videos linked in the description. It's essentially ancient Egyptians and carving granite without metal work at all. Uh, first video, how the ancient Egyptians cut granite with flint, an experiment from the Scientists Against Smith channel. The second one is in French, but it's from a National Geographic special uh, featuring Dennis Stocks and he, he went to a sculptor to use flint tools and look at those results. Flint or chert tools such as these are strewn across the Egyptian landscape, that literally everywhere there's also specialised uh, high quality chert mines. Um, in parts of Egypt as well. These can also be found in the pre-dynastic period but also linked to um, Old Kingdom early dynastic times as well. Literally these tools are everywhere uh, not just stone also worked tools. They, they have been used. Uh, if you've ever seen any Lost High technology videos I'll always talk about it's impossible to be done, it cannot be done, it requires either steel or, or, or iron and these were pre-Iron Age times where these uh, uh, hieroglyph sculptures were made. So either it's, they had to have steel or some form of lost ancient high technology. Amongst those specialists in the lost high technology um, promoters, they'll even say, well, this guy is a master mason sculptor. He knows what he's talking about. And then that, that guy uh, will come on and say, it's impossible. It can't be done. I'm a stone worker. Uh, well, Let's just uh, examine that and look at a few experiments. That's what's missing from, you know, there's a lot of claims it's impossible, it can't be done. I've studied this for decades, pay me money, come on my tours, buy my books. Well, let's just look at the veracity of that. The first one I'll show is just some cut clips from the Scientists Against Smith channel. And again, they just sat down with some granite, got those tools. Uh, they're, they're not sculptors, they're not... Um, master masons or anything that they, they just sat down with the tools and like with zero experience um, um, maybe in the case of Nikolai he's, he's done some experiments um, but they wouldn't they certainly wouldn't call themselves master carvers so I'll just scribble it out start tapping away tap 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 uh, it wasn't uh, I don't know the exact time frame um, uh, but in a whether it was a, a day or two again a lot of experimentation they don't have generations of experience to to draw upon it's just let's just grab it let's just start banging away rubbing away so first they use essentially as a hammer or as a chisel they use the flint uh, they get the shape then they polished it down not even not even to a high polish again they're just demonstrating the principles they're not claiming to be masters and, sh and they're not because uh, there's also grades of work that can be found uh, then they use a copper bow saw to drill the eye hole, which is uh, even they. Well, uh, one, the, the, those tools were you know, even depicted in ancient um, uh, uh, depictions of workshops in ancient Egypt. So they've got their final piece, and what will be said? Well, this is not very high quality. Well, again, they're not uh, weren't claiming to. They were just again a short term experiment, um, but. Firstly, it's proving the principle, but now let's look at the second piece, which is called, uh, was a uh, natural, um, National Geographic. And well, in essence, Dennis Stocks, who is not a sculptor, but he does experiment with primitive technology, went to a sculptor, took this, uh, you know, we see some photos there, they go to a piece of granite. And so firstly, he showed, now sculptors now would use a steel, uh, to, well, they would actually use more, uh, probably other tools as well, but Firstly, you see that steel is uh, it's it's superior to to other other, other type like for instance uh, bronze definitely superior. But now he uses a bronze tool. I'm not sure even if it's arsenical bronze, which would make it. But again, you can see the uh, the dust does fly off. The tool does work, but it's not as effective as steel, and you have to maintain your tool much better. So. Now they're not going to use any metal at all. What they're going to use is flint tools, the tools which are found in abundance everywhere, and not just in Egypt, because you have people working hard stones like granite all across the world. And these tools are very, like a, um, still maybe not the equivalent of a, a modern steel chisel, but they, they, as we saw, they do work. So now the test was to 
uh, replicate one corner of a sarcophagus. So that's Dennis Dock's experimental archaeologist. Uh, he's often maligned amongst the lost ancient height. They only show one clip of him from 30 years ago drilling, um, and but these types of things are completely missing. So we go to uh, the tomb of Tutankhamun in the Valley of the Kings, and this is one of the sarcophagus. Now the guy, the uh, sculptor, uses stone uh, pounding stones and hammers and then he'll start doing some more fine detail in flint tools now he's a sculptor but he was trained on modern materials so even using flint to him would have been a learning process because he was not raised we didn't have generations of experience so this is a uh, um uh his results now again using flint tools he's new to these but firstly Flint is impossible. No, it's not. It, it does work. And there we see the result, and you compare it to the original one. Now, from his experimentation, again, fine details, undercutting, um, these are all possible. Uh, and we'll, we just see the results. So, firstly, these, these tools do work, and, and these experiment, these are, again, experiments. They're not long you know it's it's not a, a master in these ancient techniques work he's he's learning as as he goes and he has a time frame on there but what he he calculated took you know how long did it take him to do that and he worked out that to make the complete sarcophagus on his own would take roughly about six years however that's assuming that there's only one mason working at one time and so a group of 10 men which would comfortably work around this even you'll the the quality of work is almost like a signature of there so 10 men would be able to create a sarcophagus such as this one in eight months higher quality work would take longer because you do more pot you want to polish down more so you see it's not very it's not even really honed it's like not but i've done experiments but like how long does it take to hone um how long does it take to polish so it would take longer but we're talking eight months for 10 men uh, now these sarcophagi are relatively rare you know over cent over the centuries and millennia they're not just strewn around the place you know they, they are um, more for for the wealthy people but granite or um, can be carved with flint or with chert and it just depends on how much energy and time and manpower you want to put into it it is not a mystical unexplained lost high technology